Otherwise, Rachel will probably tell me to hit the record button. She's good that way. So Jacob, I see in the chat, you've got, I'm trying to open a part with our setup file and the option to use a setup file isn't there. Is there anything I can do to fix it? Okay, so generally what that means is your setup options aren't set properly. You know, those pathways. So let me share my screen. Here's what I'm thinking. Right, come on. It's got the silly dialogue right in front of where I need to click. Okay, so what I would do is I would look under system options, file locations, document templates, and make sure that you still have SW templates properly mapped to the right place. That would be the first way that that could get screwed up. Uh, so that would be under which templates? Uh, default templates, right? It's going to be under file locations. File locations. Document templates. Yep. And then make yeah. sure that uh, you've got a pathway going to your templates folder. All right, that's what it was. So I just click add and add it. You got it. All right, thank you. It says no items to match your search. No items to match your search. Okay, so here's how I would do it. I'm gonna try and put, I'm gonna click on add. And then I told you guys to create SolidWorks templates. Double click on that, say select folder. And then it should add another line just like that. So I'm not sure where your error message is coming from. Well, it's just not letting me click it, or rather it's not showing in the folder. It's there, it's just not letting me click it. So for example, if I go to create a new part, I see my SolidWorks templates, and there's my cool part template. Can you get that far? No. Okay, then the next right. thing I would ask is, in the lower left, does it say novice or advanced novice. on this button? Also says, for the new doc SOLIDWORKS document templates, MBD and tutorial at the top. For okay, show me your screen, because that's just not ringing any bells. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got something wrong with your file pathway. Yeah, that might have been what happened this morning as well. Okay. Because I can click anything, sketch didn't do anything. So that might be something that happened earlier today. So you've got my cool part template open. Yes. So you really don't want that open. Go ahead and hit cancel. Go to the little gear icon. File location. File locations, yeah, nothing. Oh, nothing. it doesn't have to be anything. You're just making a pathway to the folder. You're not right. making a pathway to an object. And the other thing is you don't want to have backups go into your templates file or your templates folder. So I would get rid of that bottom line, delete that, hit add. 
SolidWorks template, say select folder, okay, and just say okay. Do you want to make the changes? Yes. Okay. So now uh, close down that part you're in. Use the little X in the in the upper right. That also works. Okay, however you want to get there. Doesn't matter. And there now you I'll go. Try it. Yeah, now do a new. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Much better. Yep. Okay, I'm going to take the screen back and away we go. Okay, so lecture four, we're going to talk about bot bodies of revolution and the whole wizard and a bunch of other good stuff. So let's see, this is going to be our topic of the day. Labrador Retriever Sauvignon Blanc. Now hopefully you guys are 21. Nope. Well, probably not. I know a bunch of you aren't. All right, so here we go, lesson four, bodies of revolution. Now, the reason that I show that wine bottle is that is the classic body of revolution. So when you have an object that is axisymmetric, meaning the same all the way around, or even a feature, we can think about doing a revolution. When we do a body of revolution, we draw half of the object and then we spin it around to create a full solid. So let me do a demonstration. We'll do a simple one first. Probably the simplest one I could, could do is probably a simple donut. Okay. So a porno, uh, like this application for a student law. Somebody's coming through. You need to mute your audio. There we go. Okay, so I've drawn a circle. I've defined it in space. I've defined the diameter. That's all good. I'll get out of my sketch. And I'm going to come to the command manager on the top and I'm going to hit revolved, boss, or base. First thing it asks is axis of revolution, AKA, what am I gonna spin about? Andrew, yes. You just said get out of your sketch. What do you mean by that exactly? Okay. So I was in the sketch like this, so I'm just gonna exit the sketch. I'm just gonna click okay. it off. Okay. So what does that do? So any changes that I do now are no longer contained within the sketch. Okay. It says, I'm done with that. I'm moving on to something else. So I'm gonna to go to the features tab, revolve boss or base. I'll click on the object that I'm gonna revolve. I'm gonna choose my axis of revolution except I don't have my axes turned on. There we go. One more time. There we go. So we're, we're getting a preview of what the computer is gonna do. It's gonna revolve about axis five and it's going to create a donut. We don't have to do a complete 360 if we don't want to. So what I like to say is that this is the diet version of a donut. So if I just tell it spin 180 degrees, it'll go 180 degrees around. If I don't like the direction that it's spun around, we can also reverse it just like most 
features, and it spins around the other way. Can you show again. Sorry, how did you access? Okay, one person at a time. Can you show again how to pick the axis of revolution? Yep. So you just come to this blue box, click in it to say that's what you're going to select, and then just click on the axis. So in this case, axis five, the vertical axis, and it revolves the circle around axis five. Okay. Could you pick a different line? Sure. Like a diagonal instead of an axis? Sure. So if I clear that and I pick this one, it revolves about the other direction. And I can flip the revolution if I want. Absolutely. Uh, I'm having a problem getting, I'm kind of far behind. Uh, when I press revolve, uh, boss uh, base, it won't let me, it keeps entering me back into the sketch. Okay, you should not. I'm not. Show me your screen. I can't imagine how it's going to do that. Go ahead. Hold on, it's getting weird. Can you see the screen or no? Yep. We're good. All right, so I'm gonna exit it out. Do that. Try to pick a plane. No, no, not a plane. You want to pick the sketch. Oh, you had a second sketch going. That's what your problem was. So get out of that revolve. Use the red X. Okay, that looks good. Go down and click on sketch one. Okay, now go over and hit revolve boss base at the top. Go up to the blue box where it says axis of revolution. Now right. pick, pick on axis one. Click in the blue box and pick axis one. This blue box here? Yep. Not letting me. Okay, then just pick axis one. There you go. All right. And green check to say okay. Congratulations, you have a donut. Thanks. Sorry about that. No, nope, not a problem. It's kind of like this is a school or something. That's a good point. Almost. Yeah, kind of, sort of, ish. Okay, so that was probably the simplest body of revolution you could possibly do. Okay, now let's move on to our wine bottle and we'll do some cooler and slightly more intricate stuff. Not a whole lot more intricate, but yeah, a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna create a sketch on my front plane that I'm then gonna revolve. Right from the beginning, why don't I turn on my axes? I'm going to start off with a rectangle and I'm going to click on the origin. Say OK. And when I measured the bottle before class, it was 11 and 3 quarters inches tall. So, spark dimension. 11 and three quarters tall. The top of, let's see, we'll draw the top of the neck. So I'm just gonna drop a line like this. And I think I will trim, trim that off as well. And I'll just kind of drag that line into place. So it's give or take about right. This is where I can show you some of the cool arc functions. 
So I'm going to come up to tangent arc. I'll click on the end point. I'm going to drag, click on an arc right out there. I can also show you a three point arc. This is a good usage. I'll click on that endpoint, that endpoint. Okay, so that's coming together. I want a nice smooth transition right in here. So I'm going to apply a relation that says these two arcs are tangent to each other. How'd you get the arc? How did I get which arc? Like the one that you just put on there. All right, let me just do both of them again. So I'm coming up here to the sketch tools and I want to do an example where I use a tangent arc. So that means that when I click on the end point here and I drag out an arc, I left click, that gives me an arc that's automatically tangent to the vertical line. Now I'm going to put a three point arc in right here. So I'll go up to the arc palette again. I'll choose three point. Choose the two ends. And I'll drag it out to about the right position. Now I'm going to add a relation between my two arcs. So I set them tangent. Tangent means it's got the same slope coming off the end of this line as it does going into this line. I'm also going to add a relation from this arc to the vertical line. I'll make that tangent. So that I have a smooth transition right up in here. Okay, so it's starting to look like a bottle. I can use a fillet, which is this item right here, to round off this corner right at the bottom. There we go. And let's make that a quarter inch fillet radius. There we go. Okay, so my geometry is looking pretty good. I need to get a few more dimensions on this thing. So I will smart dimension the top. That was 0.58. The bottom diameter was 1.5875. This radius was four. And this radius was two. So now, Let's see, I'm still underdefined. Give the height of that section and a fully defined. I have my bottle. Okay, so I'm done sketching. I'm going to exit my sketch. Then I'm going to do a revolve boss base. This time, I'm going to use this vertical line as what I'm going to revolve about. And voila, we have a bottle. Eventually, over the course of the course, I'm going to show you guys even how to put the, the dog label on it. But not for today. So we've got our bottle, uh, but this bottle isn't much fun.
This is solid glass. So there's no room for wine in it. I hate when that happens. What we can do is we can use the shell command to hollow it out and then we can put our wine in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the face that I wanna pierce. So where's the hollowness entry point? That's gonna be up here in the neck of the bottle. And I'm gonna set the thickness to 0 0.08 inches. I'll say okay. And now I can look down inside and I can actually see that I have a hollow bottle. So I can put my wine in it and life is good. Okay, there's another way I could have done this. So let me get rid of the shell command. Oops. Go back to having a solid bottle. I'll go into my sketch one. There. The other way I could have done it, if I didn't have just all uniform thicknesses, I could do offset curves. So let's see how that would have worked. I'm gonna click on offset entities click on one curve and the offset command goes right around the sketch and it offsets everything by a given amount. In this case, 0.1 inches. Well, I don't really like that. I want it on the inside. So I'm gonna put my offset on the inside and I'm gonna make it by 80 thousandths, 0 0.08 inches. Well, that got me part of the way. So if I were to revolve this right now, I would have a cavity right in here and I'd have a solid rod of glass right up the center line of the part. And I'd still end up with a closed top, which, you know, is not much fun. I still can't get my wine in. Okay, so let's fix the offset curves that I created. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of the top one. I'm going to extend that line. I'll do a trim, get rid of the top. I'm going to get rid of this line. And I just need to fix down here by the origin. So I'll do an extend and a trim. You notice that my region uh, shaded back in, so it says I have a closed region. Okay, but I have some blue lines, so I've got to fix my under constrained condition. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reestablish the overall height of the bottle. I'll go from the bottom. to the top. Let's see, I'll define the length of the straight neck. All right. Wow, I got lucky. I kind of bungled that one in the other section, but now I'm back to fully defined. So if I wanted to make, say, the bottom a little thicker, that would be very easy right now. There are ways you can do that with shelling, but I find this to be far more straightforward. I'll say okay. Uh, we'll get out of the sketch. And since I already have the revolve feature, it re-revolves it and I have my hollow bottle again. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. I'll hit F and center the part. But I wanna be even cooler than this. Now I wanna make it glass, I wanna be able to see through it, and I wanna have the proper color. 
So what I'm gonna do is come right over here to the part manager and I'm gonna click on material to select it and then right click. I'm gonna say edit material. I'm gonna hit other non-metals non and one of my options is glass. What this is gonna do is apply all the uh, physical properties of glass to my solid model. So then I'll be able to do things like do a weight analysis, do a volume analysis. Uh, I could do finite element stress analysis on it. I do all kinds of good stuff. So let's apply glass as a material. So I hit apply and close. And you can see already it's become translucent. And if I want to, I'll click on the solid body. I'll hit the drop down under appearances and I'm gonna apply a condition to all of part three. So that means all the whole body and anything I make after that. I think I'll come down here to a custom color. That's not bad. I'll choose green to match the cool green color of my wine bottle. And there we go. And lastly, we'll clean it up by doing a hide and show. We'll turn off the axes and hide the planes. And there, friends and neighbors, is my wine bottle. Okay, any questions on that? Maybe for later on, but how? what if you wanted a different kind of curve instead of a point circle? Uh, so what are you thinking? Like a whiskey flask kind of thing? Like a par parabola shape or some other uh, algebraic type of curve. Uh, you can certainly do it, no question. Mm. I would have to set that one up. That's something you would probably do with splines. So you can actually read in, let's see. Insert curve. So you could do a curve through X, Y, Z points. You could go into Excel and make up a complete perfect parabola with like a thousand points. And you could do things like solar collector surfaces and you do all that kind of craziness using that command. So yeah, absolutely doable. Then you would bring in the X, Y, Z, uh, create a spline through the points and ex extrude it and you'd have it or revolve it. Absolutely okay. doable. Okay. Um, where's the shell feature again? Right up in, right up here. So it's in the Thank features you. command manager right at the bottom. And all of this stuff you can also get through, through the, uh, through the dialogue. So I think, I always get shell off the, off the command bar, but it's right, features, shell. So you can get it through the menu system if you want. Can you uh, re-go over necking the bottle? Like when you did the neck? Okay. So how I put the arcs in? Yeah. Okay. So we'll go back into the sketch. I'll say normal two. So you get rid of that stuff. And get rid of that, get rid of that. We'll go back to the point where it was a solid bottle.
Okay, so I have everything I need right now to make a closed region except for the two arcs. I'll get out of my trim command. And the point of the arcs was I wanted to demonstrate the different ways that you can make arcs. So if you hit the drop down, you have a center point arc, which goes like this. Draw the center point and then wrap around to create the arc. So that's one possible option. The next option is this tangent arc. So you click on the end of a line and it starts a tangent curve, which you can just drag out. The last one is a three point arc. in which you click on one endpoint, the other endpoint, and then any other point on the arc, and it drops in an arc for you. So then we have to apply geometric relations. So I'm gonna go between the arc and the line, I'll make it tangent. And then I'm gonna go between the two arcs, and I'll make those tangent. Get rid of that. That was just a demonstration, so we don't really need it. Okay, and that's how I made the arcs. And as soon as I get out of this, I do need to have a fully defined sketch, uh, but it will revolve without it. Let's fix that. So it didn't have an axis of revolution because I had deleted it. And there we go. It all updates again. And this time it is glass, it is green, but it's solid on the top. Okay. Any other questions, folks, before we move on? I remember where the shell button is. Can you show me where the other button was, the other method of doing it? Not how to do it, just where the button was again. Okay, so shell is right here. And then if you are in a sketch, you have the offset entities. Okay, and thank that, you. And that's what did the offset lines. Okay, let's roll along so that we can get you guys into the homework get you asking homework questions. Okay, so that was bodies of revolution. I mean, pretty simple stuff. It can be open in the middle. It can be fully solid, either way. Uh, here's a video where I actually do just the wine bottle if you wanna see just that. Okay, so let's do some, some of the uh, pre-programmed or what I call canned features. And by far the most important one in my mind is the whole wizard. Just because you use it so much and there's so much information in it, it saves you a ton of time looking through the machinery's handbook and finding tap drill sizes, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna just draw a piece of metal so I have something to play with. Uh, six inches by, oh, let's do 12. Of course, I always have to locate it in space. There, fully defined. My soul feels good. Get out of the sketch and I'll do an extrusion. Let's make this piece of good stout one inch plate. And we'll get rid of the planes. There. Nice. Okay, so hole wizard. It's right up here in the uh, features tab of the command manager. 
And this has just about every kind of hole you could possibly ever want. I don't think I've ever used anything different than what's already pre-programmed in this thing. So let's do the simplest possible one first. This hole right here. So top right, that is, excuse me. <coughs> that is a simple drilled hole. So if I choose a drilled hole and I start coming down, I can do inch size. There are all kinds of different drill types. Um, so if we wanted to filter for just the number drills or just the fractional 64th drills, we could do that. I'm gonna leave it on all drills for right now. We choose our drill size and all the different sizes are right here in the drop down. So you'll notice that there are 64th size. Okay, those are your common US fractional inch drills. There's letter drills. And there are also number drills. Oh yeah, the number ones are the smaller ones. So those number ones are your smaller sizes. And I can never remember what sizes they are. So if you want a decimal interpretation of the drill, just click on show decimal values. Now when you hit the drop down, it tells you what the size is. So like a number six is a 0.204. So we're gonna use a standard common drilled hole to start off with. We're not gonna use near side countersink, we don't need that. Uh, what if you don't have for your type all drill sizes? What are you saying? Uh, binding head screw, uh, mostly hex bolts, finish bolts, hex screws, stuff like that. Okay, so you hit the wrong hole option. I think what you hit was this one on the left, counter bore. I want you to be over here on the right. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's say we wanna drill a number six hole that's 0.204 in diameter. The way we do that, we, we click on positions, click on the face to put it on, and then it shows me a little hole. And every time I click, it drops in another hole. I need to smart dimension the location so I'm gonna come off the edge, go to the center of the hole. So maybe inch and a half over. And you can go between hole centers if you want. So if I wanna go between those two, I could do something like half an inch. Okay, so this is just a simple sketch that the system automatically makes for you. Notice down here, you still have to be fully defined, which I am. So I've got these holes fully located. I'll say, okay. Green check to finish. And over here in my part manager, I get this nice call out. It says number six, 204 diameter hole, item one. And when I go to look for that in my model, if I click on it, it automatically highlights. So that's pretty jazzy. Underneath that 204 hole, you're gonna see two sketches that were created automatically. The first one is your locating sketch. So if I edit that sketch, there's the location of the points that we just positioned. And if I go into the second sketch, there's the geometry that created the hole for me. So very convenient. How do you actually like, oh, never mind. Okay, so 
here's where I want to show you guys a no-no because I keep seeing it every year in class and I have no idea where it's coming from. But here's what I don't want you to do. Yeah, Alex, go ahead. Um, I can you ask know, it after you're done explaining it. Just a question. No question? You're good to go? Uh, no, you, you can finish what you're saying first and then I'll ask you. I don't want to interrupt you. Well, I'm about to go off on a tangent, so go ahead and ask. All right. Um, so with the whole wizard, is there a way to get the... Um, or do they always go all the way through or can you have like... Um, different nope. Steps? You have... You have all kinds of options. So in that case, my end condition was through all. I could also do blind. Blind just means to a depth. So if I told it go to 0.5 inches, I have either 0.5 to the fully formed hole or to the tip of the drill bit, either way. Let's see what that looks like. So if you look in there, you'll see that this surface is conical and this matches the 118 degree point on a typical drill bit. The other thing I can do so sometimes people want flat bottom holes. If I do custom sizing, I could do a custom diameter. And if I put in 180 degrees, I can make a flat bottom toll. And now the cone is gone. So yes, you can set the bottom angle. You can say whether it's through or blind. Uh, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys something not to do. And to drive it home, I'm actually gonna change the material to red. Just to drive home the idea that I do not want it done this way. Oh, that's way hard on the eyes. Eh, that looks orange on my screen, but whatever. Okay. This is a do not do, and I see it every year and I don't know where it comes from, but maybe you guys can help me. Maybe there's another CAD package out there that people are trying to unlearn. So what I see happening is people will click on the face that they wanna put the hole on, they'll create a sketch, they'll come up here and they'll grab a point and they'll put a couple of points there And, you know, they, they don't do too badly. You know, at least they fully dimension where the points are. Oops. Okay, so I have a new sketch with two points in it, fully defined, but then what the students will do, which I can't figure out, is they'll click on the face, they'll do the whole wizard, and then, let's see, we'll use, quarter inch hole, positions, they come in and they put the hole right on top of the points so that now this quarter inch hole is dependent on this sketch four where there's already a positioning sketch right here. So I got two sketches positioning stuff. Guys, don't do that. You don't need it. It's confusing for the next person that picks up your work. Just put everything under the feature right in the first sketch below it, and then you're good.
There's just no need for this kind of stuff. Um, I never saw that in my 20 years out in the world. So if anybody can tell me where that comes from, I'd love to hear it. Would you mind repeating that? You said yes. there, you only drew one sketch to define its location. So where does the second sketch come from? Okay, so all the dimensions are in sketch four, but sketch five is what actually does the positioning. So we've got the positioning information spread between two different places. That's what I'm not liking. I want it okay. all in one place. That's okay. often how you do it in um, uh, Autodesk. Uh, you usually define the points before you make the holes. That is good to know. Okay. So please yes. do Autodesk not do that. that. Yes. Dura, if you had a statement, thought? Oh, yeah. It's they, uh, high schoolers use AutoCAD and uh, Autodesk Inventor because it's free for the high school. So that's where it's taught. Okay. Yeah, we use Autodesk Inventor and you define the point before you define the hole. Oh, okay. Good to know. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, I like Autodesk Fusion 360. I do all my CNC toolpath stuff with that. Um, SolidWorks just got into the CNC end of things and they're still, in my opinion, trying to get the bugs worked out. I find in, uh, Fusion to be way nicer on toolpaths. Okay, so anyway, just create the feature first, then define the location of the holes inside the feature. And do not do this. So I'm gonna get rid of that, get rid of that. And we will change this back to green. So let's do a couple of threaded holes. Those are probably the next most uh, common holes. So I'm going to do the hole wizard. I'm going to come to this one right here. It says straight tap. Okay, a tap is a cutting tool that removes metal to create a thread. I don't want the custom sizing. And I'm gonna march right down through the dialogues again. So threaded, straight tap, ANSI inch. This type, uh, we're just gonna go with tapped hole. We can choose our size. These are all of the common sizes for both normal coarse thread and fine thread. The fine thread is stuff you use on hard materials. So if I have carbon steel, aluminum, I'm gonna use the 5 sixteenths 18. The first fraction is the diameter. The second is the pitch. So that says that the thread makes 18 spirals uh, for every inch of length. And if I have a hard material, I do more spirals per inch of length. So we'll do a, a 5 16 18. That's the common uh, screw size you use on any automobile, although they are metric now. Uh, let's see, instead of blind, we'll do through all. Always make sure that cosmetic threads are turned on. Then positions. I'm gonna click on the surface. I'll drop two holes and then position them. Again, fully defined sketch. I'm gonna say, okay. And now when I zoom in, I see the dotted line, which is the major diameter of the thread 
you know, this is the, the depth that the thread is cut into the hole. See it on both sides. And I see this little decal in here, which actually represents the thread. This is what I want to see, folks. I do not ever, ever, ever want to see the thread feature. Okay. In fact, I even put out a little video on the videos tab of the website of five easy ways to fail MEE 120. Okay, and the thread feature is right up there at the top. Every year on the first exam, someone thinks that thread features are great, they put them in, and I will slam them for like 15 points per occurrence. The reason is the thread feature makes it very hard to CNC program. There are not a lot of uh, faces that you can click on when you program to get the right diameter. It's very hard to do a finite element analysis when you have actual threads in there. And the threads are not properly formed and even SolidWorks tells you it. Plus, if that's not bad enough, uh, those helical faces take up a huge amount of graphical computation and RAM. So if you put a whole bunch of spirals in there, your computer's just gonna go to its knees. It's gonna be awful, become totally unresponsive. So if you've got something like the F-22 Raptor engine, which has bolt joints with about, I think we had like 120 bolts in every joint, and there's probably a dozen joints. You know, if you've got a thousand bolts in your layout, you are just in trouble, okay? So do not use the thread feature. Do these nice cosmetic threads. Okay, diatribe over on that one. Is the 5 16 the inside or outside diameter there? It should be the outside, which is gonna okay. be this dotted circle. And if you wanna check, you can actually look at it. You go under evaluate and then measure. And I should be able to click that. Come on. Well, it gave me area perimeter. So like if I click on the edge there, it'll give me the diameter. And that is the proper tap drill size for a 5 16 And I didn't have to go look it up. I'm naturally lazy. So anytime it'll do the work for me, I'm all good with that. Uh, I guess I can't. But anyway, it is the right size. And when we get to the point of the class where we're doing blueprints, uh, you can actually put a dimension on that dotted line and you'll see that yes, in fact, it is 5 16 Okay, back to features and more holes. Okay, let's do tapered tap. This one I've used quite a bit, and this one kind of hurt the head of the students in the other section. I'm gonna click on that. This is something that you use for piping. Okay, and I wanna warn you guys about this. Every junior engineer makes this mistake, myself included. I did, I screwed up a project that doing this. Okay. When it comes to piping, piping goes by trade names. So when somebody says they've got one inch pipe, they have a metal pipe, but no dimension on that thing is one inch anywhere. Not inside, not outside. So let me actually show you one and show you how bad this is. I don't know where it came from, but it's a thing. Okay, so we'll do inch tapered pipe tap, uh, let's do, yeah, we'll do a one inch through all. You can set the depth of the thread, make sure cosmetic thread is turned on. I'll just put one this time. We'll locate the feature. Set 
Say OK. So the interesting thing about pipe threads is that they are tapered. So they're narrower at the bottom than they are at the top. That's so that when you screw the pipe in, it goes into this conical shape and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter as you screw it down. And that's how you get your watertight seal or hydraulic fluid tight, whatever the case may be. And let's take a look at what the diameter of that actually is. So I told it to give me a piece of one inch pipe. The bottom diameter is 1.141. It's not even close to one inch. And at the top, it's 1.2386. So again, not even close. So when it comes to pipe, just remember, it's a trade name. The dimensions will not be representative of the name. So you said the screw threads taper, you mean they get closer together at the bottom or the diameter Absol of the frame? No, absolutely. They do get closer together. Okay. So the uh, pipe tap itself is actually a cone and it's a 1.75 degrees. So as you screw the tap into the pre-drilled hole, it gets harder and harder and harder to turn in. Whereas when I do a quarter 20 or 5 16 it's kind of uniform difficulty all the way through because it's only cutting a uniform amount of metal out of the hole. Whereas this thing just gets brutally hard. So the diameter of the circle gets smaller. No, it gets bigger. So I'm continually cutting away more and more material from the top edge as I begin to cut metal down here. Oh, I see. Yeah, and that's why you see that we've still got uncut material here, but we've got cut threads up here. It's because did, of that taper. Did you program in the specific thread dimension, or not dimensions, attributes? No, those are maintained in a national standard so you don't want to change those. Otherwise, none of the common pipe fittings would go together. Okay. Okay, let's see what else we've got. More hole wizard. So over here, the rest of these, I really don't use that much. Counterbore is out there. This is for when you want the head of the fastener below the surface. So, you know, maybe you've got some machinery that's moving across the surface, uh, like I did when I was working in the printing press industry. Uh, we had all kinds of moving arms and moving shafts. Sometimes we had to keep the heads of the screws down below the surface. And these are kind of nice because there are standard counterbore sizes. And all I have to do is pick which size bolt I'm gonna put in it. And then it sizes the hole for me. So if I'm gonna put in a 5 16 bolt that is a hex screw, by hex screw I mean just a plain Jane six sided bolt. And I want it to go down into the hole and be flush with the surface. This thing is gonna set up everything I need. Get rid of that near side countersink. And normal fit, you can either make it loose, close or normal. And let's position one. Click on the face, drop it on. Oops. accidentally dropped myself out. So we'll smart dimension the point. And 
And there we go, there's a counterboard hole that's proper for a 5 16 uh, hex head bolt. So if I need to put a socket in there, it's properly sized for the socket, all that stuff, and I never had to look up anything. Are those counterboard holes ever threaded? No. No, you don't want to thread them because typically what's going on is this green piece of metal will be on top of another piece of metal down below and you're trying to bolt through and connect them. So you need to have this hole be larger than your fastener so that you can go down and reach those threads in the bottom piece. Could you put threads in that piece? In the green piece? Yeah, like say if you had a sandwich something in between it. Um, or is this just a through hole? No, this is just a through hole. Okay. Counterbars are only ever through holes. If I needed to mount, say, a bracket on top here, I might do one of these kinds of threaded holes. But that's it. Okay. Let's do countersink holes. You have one of those in your homework at some point. More hole wizard. And this is probably, in my opinion, the least used of the common ones. So this is a lot like counter bore, except it's for a flush fastener. So if you've got something like an aircraft access door, something where you don't want a fastener hanging out in the wind, you don't want to create a lot of wind noise. These countersinks are really nice. So let's see, all you got to do is select the fastener size you want to drop through, normal, close, or loose fit. Again, these are not threaded either. These are through holes. We'll do a position. Drop it on, locate it. Yeah, Chase, what's up? Um, so it says like it has the options like normal, close, or um, loose. Like, could you explain that a little bit more for the holes? Absolutely. So what that is about is the diameter of this hole right here you know, how jiggly your fastener can be in this hole. So let's actually measure it. So like it wouldn't affect the countersink part just where like the bolt will be going through? You got it, exactly. Okay. So if your positioning is not real good in your machine, you might wanna make this hole a little bit larger. Just gotcha. to account for things being out of position. Okay. Uh, Mr. Abadessa, will you give us the type of hole that we have to do in our homework? I think I, we... I think I did, but it's okay. not real important. If you just say normal on all of the homework ones, I'm good with that. I, I think we're going to get to this when we do feature patterning. Okay. Because we can create arrays of these holes. So maybe you've got, I don't know some kind of a big access door you want to hold down and you'll put in an array of bolts. You're also going to have a homework where you have to draw a brake drum and you're going to have to put in some holes for the uh, wheel studs to hold the, the tire mm -hmm. on. Wow. Oh yeah, I believe in keeping it real. If it's not real, I'm not going to bother. There's nothing I hate worse than CAD classes where they make you draw stupid, silly shapes that you're never going to see in the real world. That just makes me nuts. Okay, I'll save that for another day, though. That's a different lecture. So earlier today, you, we were talking about um, patterns. Um, for sketches, <laughs> yes. Yeah. How would you do an array of circles that way? With hole wizard. Okay. Getting a little bit ahead, but that's okay. So let's click on the feature that we want to make a, a pattern of. And I'm going to come up here to this linear pattern. 
So I'm gonna choose an X direction and I'm gonna use my top edge for the direction. That says the pattern's gonna go in this direction. And then Y, I'm gonna make it go in this direction. So let's see, we gotta choose the feature that we're gonna pattern. I'll choose that one. I'll choose the spacing between them. I'll choose the number in the X. I'll choose my Y direction. Come on. I'll choose my offset between the bolts. As always, it goes in the wrong direction, so I'll just flip it. There. Now I've got them all on the metal. And that's how you do an array of countersunk holes. Okay. And if you wanna change them, we can edit the feature. And let's say instead of countersunk, we want just common drilled. We'll just change the type and say, okay, they all update. And it's just that easy. All right, so there are others in here. Um, I don't think I've ever used so like this legacy hole, we're not gonna use that. We don't have old SolidWorks parts. Counterbore slot, I've never even seen one of those. Uh, countersunk slot, never made that. This one, if you wanted to do the slot with the, the hole wizard, yeah, you can do it. Let's try one just for grins. So we're gonna do a 5 16th slot we're gonna do it an inch long. Whoops. Put it like that. And then locate the thing. I'm not in love with the way SolidWorks does its slot callouts on a print. It's okay. Could be clearer in my opinion. There you go. And I'll drop in a slot for you. I mean, you're welcome to use it. I, I'm not that crazy one way or the other. Can, can you show us that, um, what you just did, Ms. Rabada, so you kind of saw that that is on the homework? And I didn't really understand how you did that. That's sort of elliptical. How I did this hold. slot? Yeah. Okay. Slot. Yeah, let's drop in another one. So a whole wizard. I'm choosing the slot in the bottom right. We're gonna choose the width of the slot. It'll be 5 sixteenths. The length of it from the center right here to the center right there is gonna be one inch. We're gonna go right through. Actually, let's change this one. Let's do a blind and we'll go to a given depth. So if I go to half an inch deep, do that one just for something different. Now we have to position it. Click on the face where I'm gonna position it. Drop one on. And it will keep dropping them on every time I left mouse click. So I'm gonna hit escape to stop dropping them on. Now I have to locate it. Oops. So I have the distance over and I have the length of the slot. Oh, I take that back. It went to the extreme ends of the slot. Normally when I do these, I go from the center of the arc to the center of the arc because that's how far the machinist has to move the machine. So um, I'm not crazy about that call out. I'll say okay. 
And see, here's something else that's weird. Okay, it drew the slot, but it gave a conical bottom. There's no tool out there that makes that. If anything, you're gonna put this in with an end mill and it's gonna have a flat bottom. So if you take this to a machinist, they're gonna look at that and go, what do you want? So let's try to avoid that. Let's see how we would fix that. Do you prefer slots made with the whole wizard or by sketching a slot and extruding or does it matter? I personally always sketch them and extrude them uh, because it always gives you the right geometry. You never end up with this stuff of conical bottoms or call outs going to the far ends. You know, the important thing in this whole game is that the stuff you're making is never for you. It's always for somebody else, either an FEA analyst or a machinist or somebody. Okay, so it's always best to give them the data exactly the way they're gonna use it. For the simple reason that the better you make it for them, the more likely you are to get what you want. So it's all about you. Okay, so, uh, to, so uh, to flatten okay. the bottom of the slot, just make it 180 degrees. And I know I just cut somebody off. And that's how you get the slot to be flat. Custom sizing, 180 degrees. Yes, Jacob. So on the homework, we have a slot. Would you like us to do the whole wizard or cut extrude? You can do either one. I am, I don't care. All right, thank you. Okay, so that is whole wizard. And arrays, so let's see what I haven't talked about on the handouts. You are gonna see in the homework, uh, there's something called a Gantt chart and there's also a list of activities for making brownies. Okay, that goes to the final Sterling engine project where you're gonna plan out your project and when you're gonna deliver what to me. Okay, uh, I didn't go over that with the other section so I'm gonna to have to cover that next week. Do not worry about handing in the Gantt chart for your engine plan. Ah, yes. Okay. So I showed you how to make threads with the whole wizard on an internal thread. Let's do an external thread, something you'd have like on a bolt, because that you apply differently. So let me draw a piece of threaded rod. So I'll do half an inch in diameter. Most of the time I put my sketches right on the origin. And that's for CNC programming reasons. Okay, so let's say I wanted to draw a piece of threaded rod from this cylinder. The way I do that is I click on insert, annotations, cosmetic thread. I click on the edge where the threading is gonna start. And then I just have to choose my size. So I did half inch rod and it says, oh, okay, your most reasonable uh, choice would be half 13, which is common everyday coarse thread half inch rod. You can say up to next and it'll go to the far end. You can say blind, it will go to a certain depth. So there's half an inch of threading. There you go. 
But again, just like holes, I do not ever, 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 never want to see the thread feature. All I want to see is these little decals so that you don't use up all the RAM in your machine. That's what um, it should look like. Earlier when you showed us how to do this, you had like the little cut off the end of it. Oh yeah. Off the end of the bolt. Yeah, I, I put a chamfer on it. Yeah, we're getting okay. the chamfers. So what you're talking about with that is right up here under fillets and chamfer. So I click on the edge. And typically you make the end of a piece of threaded rod just slightly tapered so it goes in nice and easy. So I'll put a 30 thousandths angled chamfer on the end. Yeah. And most bolts actually have this. Uh, okay, so I'm just looking at the chat. What do you do if you want a hole bigger than those listed under the drill sizes? Do you do? No, you never do extrude cut. You do a custom size. Let's go back to that. Okay, so I'm going to put a two inch drilled hole over here. So I'll do the hole wizard. I use a common drilled hole. And I'll come down to custom sizing and I'll put a two inch hole. You can have 118 degrees, that's fine. I'm gonna say through all. And this is actually a really good question because it brings up something I forgot. Okay, that's how I want to see you do a two inch hole or something that's bigger than in the tables. However, notice over here in the part manager, you got five sixteenths two so you got two different diameters going on in the call out. What I really want to see you guys do is if it's something special, rename it so that this call out matches the geometry. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say rename tree item. Two point zero zero diameter hole. So now whenever I click on it, it takes me to the proper feature. And this description matches the geometry. That's just a matter of professionalism. Okay. Uh, how do I feel about cut sweeps instead of threads? No, not a fan of it. For the same reason, Okay, you've got those curly helical faces that are taking up all your RAM. If you look in the thread feature, that's exactly what they're doing. Okay, and it will come back to bite you. I know, I've screwed it up. Hard, bad, hard. Things that I don't want to recall. Okay, so that's the chat. And by all means, guys, feel free to speak out. Okay, so those are male external threads on things like bolts. And then we just have to do fillets and chamfers. So fillets and chamfers. Let's say that you wanna round off an edge, you know, some of these parts can be real knuckle biters if you bump into them. So you wanna round it off, it makes a nice smooth edge, easy to handle, good on the assemblers, something like that. Okay, to round off an edge, you're gonna put on a fillet feature. I'm gonna come over here, 
I'll click on the edge and a fillet. Specify the radius that I want. So maybe I want a one inch radius. And it automatically rounds the edge over for me and gives me this nice feature. If I want to change it, I just come right up, edit feature, change the number, and I can modify it. Okay, you can do multiple edges at once if you like to. So I can do a fillet and have it wrap right around if I choose to. So that works quite nicely. On your homework, you're gonna see an example where I want you to stop, it's actually a chamfer, but fillets and chamfers work the same way. So let's say I wanted to round off and have it stop right there. To do that, you just turn off tangent propagate, and then it will only round off the edges that you select. See if it acts out in this class like it acted out for me before. And it did. Why does that happen? I have no earthly idea. Okay, perfect. This has worked every year like a champ. It's, I don't know. And that really makes me unhappy. What do <laughs> the uh, full preview, partial preview, and no preview buttons do? Okay, remember when it showed me the yellow uh, little curvies? Let's see if I can do that for you. Okay, so that's previewing what it's about to create. And if I do no preview, that's what I get. I always leave the full preview on. I kind of like it. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to get back to both sections on that one of why that did not work perfectly. It's like when you go all the way around, works like downtown. And I hit okay and it's all good. You can even fill it entire surfaces if you want to. So if you really wanted to create a, a raging disaster if I click on this, I should be able to fill out the whole face and it does something like that. So bring that to a machinist and see what they say to you. I'm sure they would love seeing that print. You can make it, uh, but it will be very costly and labor intensive. Okay, so that's fillets. Notice there's no sketching involved. You don't have to draw any arcs, anything like that. Okay, chamfer. So with a fillet, it puts in a rounded edge. With a chamfer, it just puts in an angled edge. So I'm gonna select the size. Typically we do 45 degrees. You see, it puts a nice little angle in there. And a lot of times it's the same deal. You wanna make it more user friendly, a little softer so you're not cutting your knuckles up on the part. And fillets and chamfers can be used for both adding and subtracting material. So for example, I will put a sketch on this face. I will do something awful and I'll put a circle on without fully defining it.
So I can just as easily come in and put fillets and chamfers on that. And then it adds material. Or if I want to get rid of it, I can chamfer that edge. One thing I would caution you guys on, fillets and chamfers should always be added last. Okay, do everything else. For some reason, and this is again, just my experience, fillets and chamfers in the initial stages can cause solid bottle instability. Hopefully we've gotten past those days, but I still just put them all in last. And it's working for me. So, little caveat for you. Okay, so that's, how, go ahead. How would you make something, or machine something like what you just drew with the billet adding on material? So what you would do is you would leave on, let's go back to the picture. So if I, were gonna, if I were gonna make this, there's two ways to do it. If I only have ever had to make one of them, I would get a giant block of metal and I would probably just go back and forth and cut away all of the metal, leaving this big post and I would leave extra metal on right here. And then I'd come in with a chamfer tool and orbit right around to create the 45 degree. The chamfer tool has that angle cut into it, so it'll make it for you. This is not a very manufacturable part. A machinist would have a, a cow over this uh, because this would be in the way of the tool holder and there's just, there's all kinds of things wrong with this. That reminded me of a piece welded on to another. And that would be a much better way to go about it. Drill a hole right through, fit that piece in, clamp it all down and then TIG weld it right around. Okay, but we're gonna do welded parts and we're gonna do them as assemblies. So you'll have this part, which you'll go off and make. You'll have this part, which you go off and make. Then you're gonna drop them in place and we're gonna join them at the assembly level and add that material in there. There was one year I had the students, uh, one of their final exams was a welded trailer hitch. So they had to weld the trailer ball onto, they had to weld a casting onto a piece of pipe. Not for real in SolidWorks. Don't get too excited on me guys. So yes, we will go through all of that proper setup of welded assemblies. Okay, what else? Applying materials, we did that with a wine bottle. That was more fun there. If you really wanna see it all again, there's a partial video clip. Homework, do not worry about the Coke can engine Gantt chart. I didn't do it with the other guys, so I will cover that next week. Let's go look at the homework. Uh, Mr. Abodessa, you will have office hours tomorrow at three, right? Absolutely. And we will have office hours Thursday at three uh, for the rest of the semester. It was, very, it, it was very productive, it worked well, so we're just gonna keep doing it. Yeah, and is it like from three to four or is it three to five or is it pretty much free? Uh, free range? Well, if my wife's dinner is not on the table, she gets mad at me. Okay. So it's definitely until 4.30 and depending on how productive it is and how much I want to risk her wrath, we'll see between 4.30 and 5. Okay, thank you. Okay, so homework one. So this is a nice little 
uh, it's actually a plumbing collar. So you got a two inch uh, NPT taper. So thing taper tap right in the center. I don't care how you draw this thing, guys. You might want to draw, you know, a circle and extrude it to create this bottom flange. And then on the top face, put another circle and do an extrusion up to make the boss. The only thing I'm going to be fussy on is I do want to see you use the hole wizard to make the hole in the center. And what type of hole is it? Two inch NPT, so taper tap. Oh, okay, it's written, okay, perfect. Yep, so there would be a piece of pipe that you'd screw into this. And you can actually see the taper right here and the angle that that gets cut at. So there's number one. Number two, probably one of the finest pieces of engineering out there. Good old fashioned 3 8 16 bolt. So you'll get to draw a bolt and then I want to see the cosmetic threads on the outside and the little chamfer down at the bottom that I demonstrated. Do you have to use those in assemblies when we get to that point? Use, or those use the bolts? Like on SolidWorks, are those pre-made for you? There is a pre-made option and they suck. They are terrible. The way I'm gonna show you works much, much better, especially at the large assembly level. Yes, there are all kinds of toolboxes and add-ons that go with SolidWorks. And every time I try one, I absolutely hate it. Like there's a package that will do gears for you. And they are absolutely terrible. Um, I draw all of my own gears. I have a little piece of software that generates a proper volume, proper faces, proper everything. And it works so much better. Okay, and then this is part number three. This was just a little plastic bearing that I had laying around Crosby. So you'll draw this. You can see that partial chamfer that I was talking about right here. That's on both sides. Um, Will we be able to do that? That didn't work for you. Yeah, a student did it in the other section and it worked perfectly. There was no problem. Okay. Okay, on each of these, I put a material note up here to tell you what it's made of. If you don't know what Delrin 2700 is, it's kind of like Teflon, it's a plastic. So look under the plastics in the material option, you'll find this. Uh, on the other one, this one, AISI 304, that's 304 grade stainless steel. So it should be in the steels. And then this one, AISI 304, again, stainless steel. Okay, my recommendation to you guys, I would start with part three right now and we'll use up what little time we have left till five o'clock and you guys can just start working on it, ask questions, uh, and try to keep you from getting hung up as much as possible. Okay, begin, have at it. Let's be productive. Can you, uh, oh, go sorry. Go ahead. Um, I was going to ask if you could quickly go over where you uh, found the tool to put external threads on. Okay. On like the bolt. I had the same question. Oh, you guys are working together. I see how you are. Okay, so to put the threads on, you're going to go insert, annotations, cosmetic thread. All right, thank you. And then you just click on the edge and tell it either full length or if you want to do it blind, you tell it how far up the shaft you want to go. If you ever want to change it, right in here, this becomes an absorbed feature of this boss. So if I want to change the cosmetic thread, 
I don't know, maybe I want to go from coarse thread to fine thread. So I could go from half 13 to half 20. And now I have fine thread. The decal doesn't really change, but the notes will change. Could you put a smaller diameter thread on that half inch bolt? No, you can't. So for example, this is a half inch rod. If I told it to put quarter 20 thread on, it's not gonna let you do it. Would you have to make then a separate like thing coming off of that? Yes, yes. You could put a, a step and a little section coming out that was within the range to make quarter inch threads, sure. All right. So let's, let's see if I can make it blow up. Okay, see what it did? There's the bottom of the thread way inside there. So I'm a little upset that it even allowed you to do it because that makes no sense at all. But last year it blew up when I tried to do that. It actually threw an error message and said, you know, can't do it. And I don't even think it lets you select it. So when I hit the drop down, in this list should really only be half 20 and half 13, because that's what you can put on a half inch shaft. Okay, so that's unfortunate, but it did it. Any other questions? Then I will be quiet. Is this going to be due alongside the homework from lesson three? Okay, so whenever you guys say, when is this due? What you need to do is come over to the website, go to the syllabus. Every single due date is listed right here. So this is the three o'clock class on 9-9, section two. So you come right down to this line the due date for the homework is 9-14. Is lesson three also due? Say again. Is lesson three also due with lesson four, just lesson four? Uh, yes, three and four are both due. Do we send them in the same email or a separate email? I would recommend separate emails. Okay. So, so ma make one zip. Go ahead, Laura. Where, like, how do you change the materials? What option is that under? Okay, that's under the part manager. So let's say I wanted to make this rod as 6061 aluminum. So you just go over to the part manager, edit material, and I will help you guys with these material callouts because I know you haven't had materials yet. So I can't, I can't expect you to know all the alloy numbers. Shoot, some of my seniors don't know the alloy numbers. Sorry if there are any seniors out there. So like, it, I would tell you aluminum 6061 T6, and then you just click on it, hit apply and close. And now the shaft has all the properties of 6061 aluminum. Thank you. Uh, how do you do the cosmetic thread again? Okay, so I got my aluminum half inch shaft. Insert, annotation cosmetic thread. You choose the starting edge. Then just go down through, we're gonna do inch, machine threads, size is half 13, that's the diameter and the number of spirals per inch. Blind means to a fixed length. And then the distance up the shaft, let's set it at half an inch. And there you go. You get a half inch of threads. Okay. 
go over and submit it. Now. I submitted it, right? Because I wanted it in a zip file. Yes, that for these first few assignments, it's not super critical. Okay, when it is going to become critical is when we get into assemblies and assembly packages, and you've got to send me back, you know, a dozen files, especially when we do the V8 engine. Uh, that one, you're sending a bunch of stuff. So just for now, yeah, zip up the three files, put them in one zip file, and send it with a lesson number. That's the cleanest way to do it. And I'm not too sure how to do that. Okay, so go to the videos tab on the website and click on making a zip file and I actually demonstrate it. Okay, thank you. Uh, should the bolt have a hole in the middle of it or is that just uh, from the top view? Is that just a thread? That is just the thread. All right, that, thank you. That's the bottom of the or the innermost diameter of the thread. Yeah, I'm never gonna make you draw anything really, really crazy. So if you think the bolt has a hole in it, yeah, no. Um, Mr. Abadassa. Sir. I had a question on the gear from like this, this morning's lecture. Yeah, go for it. So when I tried to make the like the gear slots, actually. Those four little I, cutouts. Yep. Well, like where like the gears will would meet on the outside of the gear. Oh, the teeth. Yes. Yeah. The, it only cut like triangles into the. Which so it's it like a. Which it should. You're not going to get proper volume rolling teeth, if that's what you were thinking. Well, that's no, like it. It just cut out like a line in between. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and share your screen. I'll stop sharing. Show me what you got. Because I'm not getting it. Okay. So that's kind of. Maximize your SolidWorks, please. Sorry. I'm old. I have bad eyes. Oh, okay, I see what you're doing, okay. So, let's see. Go into your cut extrude. Uh, it's kind of like blocked off. Kind of like blocked off, I don't know what that means. Like it won't let me click on it. Um, okay, there we go. This is going to be one of those editions of SolidWorks. I can feel it coming. Okay. So, so go down to your part manager where it says cut extrude thin. Hit that little triangle on the left so that it expands it. Let's modify sketch three. Go up. No, no. You are right where you needed to be. So right click on sketch three, go up to edit sketch, up, up, there you go. Okay, go get your circle tool from the sketch palette. No, there you go. Now make a circle that goes from the origin right in the center and just drag it out, make it like eight inches in diameter, right beyond everything. There you go. Click. And now exit your sketch. Exit the sketch and rebuild. So one of the things you got going on is you got that cut extrude thin Okay, so there's no internal region to act as a cookie cutter to cut those teeth out. So let's edit the cut extrude thin feature. Right click, edit feature up on top. There you go. So 
So you've got that, that. So make down below, you've got under direction two, you've got 0.1 inches, make that zero. It says, uh, please enter a number greater than or equal to like three millionths of an inch. Okay. Then let's, let's just get out of that feature and just delete the cut extrude thin. There you go. Okay. Now let's go on to uh, a cut extrude. go up to the little yellow icon uh, or go click on sketch three, go down below in the part manager. There you go. Cut extrude and say, instead of blind, do a through all and say, okay, green check. Sketch contains more than one open contour. Okay, so it's not liking your gear teeth. Yeah, I had to, I didn't really, I kind of just threw numbers in until it looked right. Yeah, we don't, put, we don't do that. So that's gonna, so, that's gonna cause you pain later on. Cause like okay, your bottoms so, aren't flat and you don't have the bottom, uh, what we call the dedendum circle. It's not in there. Okay, so how do I, how would I do that? Well, the problem is your gear teeth profile is just not sketched right. Okay. So you just got to fix your sketch before you sketch pattern the thing around. So how do I get like the dedendum circle in? Uh, you don't have to. Remember in class I told you it's a line, it's not a circle. Yeah. Tell you what, why don't I, uh, why don't I do an example for you that might help? I'm gonna show you my screen. Okay, so what if I did something like this? And I don't even really remember what that was, but. Okay, I see. So then I'm just gonna do the, 
the 30 piece pattern around and then I'll be able to go in and trim off the tops. Okay. And, and you'll have what you need. Thank you. I got started on part three. Okay. And I have it extruded to the right depth. Um, for some reason, whole wizard is grayed out along with a lot of other functions. Are you still in a sketch? Um, Go ahead and share your screen. I'll stop. Show me what you're looking at. Okay, looking good. So right now I'm on boss extrude. I'm not sure what sketch two means. Um, it looks like you created a second sketch right on that face and you're in the sketch. So go up to the sketch tab. Yeah, so you're right now in sketch two where you can draw stuff. Okay. I'm not sure you wanna be there. I would exit sketch two at this point. So does, that, does that mean sketch two is gone right now? Yes. So okay. if you exit from a sketch that has no entities in it, it just deletes it. Okay. Okay, now I've got hold with it. Okay, looking good. Um, Ms. Rabadessa, what Sir. type uh, what type of fillet do we need for the uh, homework three? Because I can't find it find the type. For homework three, let's find out. Oh no, sorry, got it. Uh, zero point six zero four forty five degrees, and I found it. Thank you, anyways. Yep, not a problem. Okay, so we have about eight minutes left, guys. I would encourage you to look through. If there's anything you're uncertain of or anything that looks hard, go ahead and try it so that you can ask questions. Just to be clear, even though the hole in part three is concentric with the outer circle, we do not apply that relation, correct? It's actually not. I think if you actually do the math, uh, it's off by like a half a thousandth. So if you divide 3.265 divided by two, it comes out to 1.6, not exactly that. I'll recalculate. Okay. My other question is about the gears. Um, yep. I got the tooth shape right. I'll just share a screen if you don't okay. mind. Yep, absolutely. It's all yours. Mm -hmm. oh, which one? Ah, it's not going over the other part. Hmm. Okay, because you're in a command. Hit that little red X in the right-hand side. There you go. Now you should be able to toggle over. Okay. So I got this shape drawn. Okay. But when I went to um, circular sketch, um, 
Do you mind running me through what's what are the steps here? Because I got this spun around, but all of the other lines were undefined. Okay, so you go right down the just the the panel. So the first one, point one, that should be the center point at the center of your circle, center of the the whole part. Yep, that looks good. And then X and Y, don't worry about that. 360 degrees, equal spacing, that's good. Four needs to change to 30, good. Entities to pattern, so you're gonna pick both sides of the V. You wanna get rid of, you wanna get rid of that arc, get rid of arc one. Yeah, right click. There you go, good. And then enter. Uh, yep, it should be good. And they're all undefined or underdefined. Underdefined, yes. So how should I fix that? Well, I would go back and look at the lecture. Okay. I, th I think if you just put a construction line between the bottom of one V to the center, you might have it just that simply. Construction lines. Yeah, so just grab a normal line. There you go, go there to the center. Click. Okay, hit escape, stop your line command. Go over the line you just created and right click. Good, right click. Go to the top and toggle it from a conventional line to construction. Go up, second row, second one in, there you go. Click that. Okay. Are you gonna mention it? Yeah, try that. There you go, just like that. And say, okay. I'll check the video. Yeah, I haven't looked at this particular problem in a little while. I'd have to go back and see how I did it. Uh, one solution might be making that just uh, a circular cut pattern. So you cut it on one sketch and then make 29 other copies. That would also do it. Hmm? Yeah, but that's, we haven't gone over feature patterning yet. So the most of the class doesn't know about that. I mean, it's not too much different from uh, circular patterns and sketches just with the feature. It's a little bit more aggravating, but yeah, I see why I haven't taught that yet. Yeah, I mean, part of it is, we're, I'm teaching everybody why you don't do sketch patterning because it's a pain in the butt. And then I'm going to show them how to do the gear program in like three steps. I feel bad for other uh, half the class already left. Yeah. You cut out early, you miss the good stuff. That's the way it works. Yeah. Uh, if we have a little bit of time, could I ask you a uh, quick question if something's okay. Yeah, ask anything you want. All right, is there if I share my screen with you? Yeah, go for it. So this is how I made one of them. Uh, just asking if it's okay for this circle to be here and the diameter hole to be based off the sketch. So what is sketch five driving? That is just driving the position. No, no, that's exactly what I told you I didn't want. I don't want external sketches driving features. Now, I'm totally good with what you did conceptually, putting that circle, but put that in the feature. So, no, do an undo. Go back to where you had the circles on, or the, uh, the four bolt holes. Oh, they just got deleted and can't undo because it just saved. Okay. 
So here's what I would do. Go back and do the hole wizard. Yep. And then choose the proper hole size. I think they're, yeah, three quarter. Three quarter inch right there. Yep. That looks good. Through all, all that good jazz. Yep. Then make a circle here. Oh, now it works. Exactly. So you can put any of that kind of, you know, helpful geometry in the feature sketch and I'm totally good with that. I do that myself. But don't create a bunch of redundant sketches so that when somebody else picks up your work, they got to go, oh, how many sketches are involved in positioning this feature? You just don't want to go there. All right, so call us 4.75. Click check and just start putting the holes right here. So click you here. got it. Yeah, that's totally fine to create a bolt circle that way. Uh, so do I click here again to get on it? Because I can't really click anything. To put the yeah, holes in. go go off and to the right and put your hole off and to the right somewhere in space. Right now I'm just clicking. Left clicking, right clicking, do anything? No. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the screen back and I'll show you show you how I would do it. Okay, so I've got a disc of metal. There. I'll do the hole wizard, drilled hole, three quarter inch. Positions. I'll drop one here, one here, one here, one here. And I'm totally good with conceptually what you did. So just come right to the center, do whatever bolt circle you want, add a relation and just say the center of the hole. Center of the hole is coincident with the circle. So now your holes are always on the bolt circle. All right, now I got you, thank you. And then when you finish up, now that circle is in sketch two with all the other positioning information and it's nice and clean. Um, and Mr. Abbas, I had a quick question with the fillet. Okay, go um, ahead. Um, can I share my screen? Yeah, go ahead. So, so when you do a fillet um, and do chamfer, you know, um, edge one, partial preview, 0 0.01 inches, 45 degree, I do okay. It does it on the whole thing and right. I don't know why. Okay, so you gotta, you gotta turn off that tangent propagate button. Okay, how do I do that? Oh, uh, down here? No, the check right below the blue box. Go up. Oh, there. got it. And then Perfect. just click on specifically the edges that you want to affect. Mm -hmm. So now would, uh, yeah, perfect. That's, thank you. Yep. Okay, guys, any other burning questions? Otherwise, I got to go make wifey's dinner. <laughs> it is true. So, it is true. Uh, when other, I've seen other people do their gears. They just did the simple part and then they had a circle and then did the gear teeth on mine. 
I did the gear teeth and the uh, inner bit all in the same sketch. Is it okay if I share the screen just to double yeah, check to make sure it's all? You guys still there? Yep, yeah, I'm. I was turning on my mic. It's okay. It wacky. just sounded like your audio dropped out. Oh, it did. I was muted. Uh, so if I go to my sketch here, sketch. You can see how I did the. Yeah. I, yeah. Is that all right? That looks like exactly what I wanted. So. Earlier, I saw other people just taking a circle well, that like go along the tops here. Yep. Is it okay that I just did a one, two, three, and then a small arc here patterned? Hold it good. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I did too. I mean, right. as long as you got the arc on the top of the teeth, I'm all good with that. Okay, nifty. That's all I had for questions, though. There's a gazillion ways to draw this, and that is all fine. Wicked. Um, I had a quick question on the bearing that we just got for the homework. Okay. So I'm trying to get that hole that's in like the middle. It's basically underdefined, and I can't figure out how to get that to like turn black to become defined. Okay, show me. Okay. Share your screen. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to define this. Okay, so just mark dimension and call out the diameter. Oh, wait a minute, no, do not do that. Go in and do the whole wizard. What the hell was I thinking? I had a, a momentary brain spasm. It won't let me do the whole wizard. That's because you're still in the sketch. So you've got to get out of the sketch and actually extrude that so that you have something solid that you can drill a hole in. But don't I have to get the sketch defined before I extrude it? Yes, you do. So I'm trying to get the, this one here, would I have to get this defined before I can extrude it to use the whole wizard? No. Go ahead and just delete that circle. Delete the inner circle. Um. So extrude go. that, then sketch the circle and cut it through? Exactly. Okay. That's it then. Okay, guys, that's it. Your quarter has officially run out and I gotta go feed wifey. Thank you. So if you want to, uh, join me three o'clock tomorrow for more fun and games as, as SolidWorks turns. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thanks.